Hi everyone, this is the second video in the series of uh, my favourite interests and this one's going to be about these lamps. So, I often get asked, not just by you know random people and friends online, but in real life as well, when people come in here and they see all this, they just want to know, why do I collect them? Uh, well, I like lights in general, you know, different styles of lighting and lighting effects and everything like that. I just like to look at it, like to watch it. I find it very relaxing to watch certain flashy lights as well, you know. Um, but these are just unusual. This is something that not many people collect, although since I've been putting these my videos of these up on YouTube and uh, purchasing from fellow collectors on eBay I have found that there is more people out there than I thought that do collect these but uh, they're all unusual they all have different purposes different designs for different situations and you know, there's a huge variety of different manufacturers. Well, as you can see, different designs as well. Even though these ones at the top here, they all look the same. They do have different functions. You know, we've got the blue lensed one for the emergency services. Complete with three cobwebs. We've got the blue and amber one again. X fire service. Amber and red for the um, railway. We've got single direction doorman here for motorway use and then these ones I have labelled them they do different things this one's uh, flashing this one is static with a photo cell I've called it a solar cell for some reason on there that's not right um, what's this one that's flash with a photo cell and I think this one's just a flashing one if I remember rightly yep so they've all got different functions and these two are just old flashing ones uh, and the same for these three here they've all got different functions as I've labelled up there And the same goes for the maxi lights, they've all got different functions, and the same with these the plastic flash and a steel flash. Same with these two. One's just a normal LED Coney light, and the other one's got that black thing in there, which makes it the Synchro Guide version, or Nissan's version of the um, Synchro Guide. Same with these. That's the Dorman Cone Light Synchro, that's just the bog standard Dorman. And then I can get ones with red lens, magenta lens, and blue lens, which are extremely hard to get hold of. Because coloured lenses like that are usually used by special services like police, fire. Uh, the red ones get used on motorways apparently to mark a lane closure, so I was told. Never seen it because I barely ever go on motorways. I haven't been on a motorway in donkey's years, actually. So, then we've got these up here. We've got this white one for illuminating signs on the motorway. Road work signs, that is. Then we've got the ones which we call the 360. Because the lens is 360, or visible 360 degrees. You can get those in all permutations. You know, I've got a red one up there. I've got the amber. There's blue. Those are JSP micro lights, by the way. Mini lights, rather, not micro lights. The same over here. Various Dormans. Uni lamps. That one is actually meant to be static, but it's got a flashing unit in it. So, what was it that one that's meant to be static? That's why there's different reflective stickers on, but I can't remember which is which at the minute. I do the red one, I've got the blue strobe which is in the lounge at the minute. 
So I just find them interesting. I find all the different designs interesting. You know, they're all built or made for a specific purpose. These are common for motorway use and those because uh, naturally for safety they don't want to be messing around bolting lights to a post or anything. They can just drop these straight on. They turn on automatically. I do believe they have a photo cell in them as well so they go off during the day and come on at night. So they don't have to go along and turn the damn things on and then turn them off and they're not running all the time to flatten the battery or to reduce the battery life. So it just makes them safer to use on the motorways. I don't, th I don't think these Nissan mono lights are uh, used on the motorways. That one's not actually a true Nissan, that one. And yes, it's Nissan, not Nissan. Very close, look. Spelled exactly the same way as the car, apart from it's got S-E-N on the end, not S-A-N. The car is N-I-S-S-A-N. So, <laughs> the car is Nissan, the lamp is Nissan. It's <laughs> very close, it's a German company, actually. Nissan is German. I've also got this as well, X Railway. I'm going to get my stepdad to make a um, a base or something for that to stand on, so I don't have to lean it. Just something out of wood, you know, that we can fix that too. Because uh, it's a bit of a pain to store like that. <laughs> you have to lean it, and I'd like to stand it. So next time I'm over at Mum's, I'm going to take that with me. And uh, I might take a battery because he loves his railway stuff. So I'll take a battery and we can see it running. Uh, yeah, that's about it, you know. And you do. There's some here, one here actually for very specific use. And this one's designed for. Um, well, even though these look the same, these are actually different companies. This one's a Wolf. That one's a Tildorn. From what I've un I can understand, Wolf bought the rights from Tildorn to remake these because I don't think Tildorn make these anymore. Um, and they're basically made for like explosive atmospheres because all the electronics are potted in there, so there's no risk of a spark accidentally escaping and then igniting a fume or something. So for like an, a hazardous area, they're basically designed for all mining. Because they're quite robust. I've got the protective cage on there. Designed to be freestanding like that. Oh, I also forgot you get a bunch of accessories as well. You get the this cage, which uh, I have seen used on skips on the roadside. I've actually got a dormant eco light in there at the minute. Um, yeah, I have seen those used on skips, but you used to see these used on scaffolding as well, just to protect them. And uh, I can't actually get to it, but you get cone brackets as well, which bolt to the lamp, so you can just pop it straight on a cone. Uh, I've actually got a proper dormant skip bracket in there as well. So... And just like collecting anything, you've got the fun in searching for a lamp you don't have. You know, just like if you were collecting die-cast cars, you've got that fun in searching for the harder to find die-cast cars that you want for your collection. Or stamps, or whatever it is you collect. TYT um, Beanie Babies, or whatever, you know. It's just the same thing, it's just a different item, that's all it is. Or an un uncommon item to collect. But I find them interesting. And I do enjoy chatting on the Facebook groups. To the other collectors, you know. And discussing the history of them and whatnot. And what different lamps were used for. And even I've seen loads that have been posted on there that I never knew even existed. <laughs> um... 
There is still a few that I would love in this collection, but one of them is extremely hard to come by, and it's called the uh, Tildor 90. Which, uh, <laughs> like I said, very hard to come by, and if it does ever show up on eBay, it's it usually goes for a high, high price. Anyway, I don't think there's much more I can add, but as always, if you've got any questions, just leave them down below in the comments. And I can either answer them on video or I'll reply to them. And uh, now that it seems like likes have become a thing again on YouTube, if you like the video, give me a like. It's much appreciated. And uh, of course, if you didn't, give me a thumbs down. I'm, I'm still not fast either way, but you know. I've heard that YouTube have made likes a uh, part of the um, algorithm again. I wish they'd make up their minds, to be honest. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you again soon. Bye.